I'll just uh, I'll just start working here, and uh, first I'll explain my layers palette. Uh, I have my canvas, which I don't usually touch. I have a toned layer. I don't like to paint right on white. And I have my sketch layer above the layer I'm going to paint on. And we'll just name that so I know which one it is in the layers palette. Um, as I paint, if you've got any questions, go ahead and ask them. Uh, I have a question I'm start. for you. Sure, go ahead. Um, and, and you may have said this, and while I was messing with the panels, I missed it, but you created this, this sketch traditionally, correct? No, actually this one, I get a little uh, ADD with my sketches. Sometimes they're traditional, sometimes they're a mixed traditional and digital. Uh, I do them in Painter or Sketchbook Pro. This one was actually done in Sketchbook Pro. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do. I do a mix of of all. And sometimes I'll draw on vellum and then scan it and bring it into the computer and finish the sketch in Painter. So I'm going to start with an acrylic captured bristle brush. It's a you know a great stock brush to use. And I uh, for my blocking, I'll keep my brush nice and fat. Always work fat brushes and then work it down to a small brush for detail. And I'll lower my opacity to about 30 or 40 percent. Grab a nice skin tone here and start blocking this in. What size is the canvas that you're using right now? This is 8 inches. Uh, let's see here. Eight inches by six and a half inches at 300 dpi. So my file size is about 19 megabytes. Yeah, I know that uh, some people had submitted questions about um, dealing with the canvas size and do you paint it one size and then size it up no. afterwards? No. If, uh, a lot of times I'll paint at a lower resolution until I get to the detail phase. And uh, what that does is allow me to free up memory, work faster, and then whenever I'm ready to go to the detail phase, I'll just go into Canvas Resize, turn off Constrained File Size, and bump this up. And if I were going to take this to print, I would change that to 600 dpi. And I'll just show you right now if I do that. I didn't lose any resolution in my file. If you were to do that in Photoshop or any other painting application where you would change the resolution from especially 100 to 600, everything would get blurry. The anti-aliasing would, would be horrible. But Painter, I don't know the magic of your developers, but they have they figured out how to do it. If I go, if I start at a painting, say eight by six at 100 DPI, and bump it up to 600, I won't lose anything, and I can continue working. And at that point, the reason that you need to for detailing is if you have a 100 DPI file and try and get a fine stroke for hair, you're not going to get it with the brushes. If you bump it up to 600, your brushes will feel smaller, and you'll get a finer stroke. But for blocking, you don't need it because you're working a nice fat brush. You don't need any of the detail. I hope that answered your question. I believe it did. So as I'm blocking, I'm just loosely looking at the reference photo trying to get my darks in here, not getting particular about the size of them, or to be honest, even the color. As long as it's in the right family, I'm okay with that. I 
I'll go in and hit some of the lights. And I never use white or black unless I absolutely have to. We've got a question. What I'm doing there, you see my cursor changed. Go ahead. Sorry about that. There's always a delay when I unmute. Um, we're wondering what kind of tablet, if you are indeed using a tablet right now. Um, you know, I used to Cintiq for a long time. I used a 12 inch and then I went up to a 21 inch and even with calibration devices I never could get the colors to match my, my Mac. So I went away from them and I actually replaced it with a $47 mono price tablet and it's, it's worked great. The only thing it doesn't have is tilt. So if you're looking for tilt out of a tablet you're not going to get it with the mono price but it's cheap, it's ugly, but it works great. I think it's... And in no way am I endorsed by... It's by funny that you just called it ugly. <laughs> it, it, it's very ugly. I mean, it looks like something from the 90s. It's got big silver buttons on the side. Um, but, you know, I'm looking at my screen. I'm not looking at my tablet. And uh, the pressure sensitivity is as good or better than the Wacom's. So I really have, I, I can't say anything bad about it except the fact that it doesn't have tilt. Uh, somewhere on my site, gregnewman.org, I did a review of the tablet a couple of months ago. I remember that. Really interested. You can go take a look at it. The, uh, the stylus has a battery inside it. I mean, it really feels like a 90s device, but it works great. And for $47, you can't beat it. I'll be sure to post your review on Twitter and Facebook okay. after this session today in case anyone wants to check it out. Okay. Now, how did you determine which brushes felt right to you? I am a traditional painter, so I like I like my old school methods. And when I first started working with painter, I would go through and just try brushes and see what felt like a traditional brush to me. Um, and to be honest, this captured bristle brush really does feel like a traditional brush. It's a fantastic brush. Uh, some of the other brushes are really, really fun to work with. Gouache, I like some of the, the gouache brushes. Um, but ironically, I just gravitate towards the acrylic brushes for some reason. I, you know, if you're starting out with Painter Light, I would say, Grab a brush and try and work with it if it feels good. Try and do an entire painting with that one brush and see if, see if you can do it. And if you're comfortable with that, then maybe try a second brush. I think trying to use every brush that's in Painter is uh, really going to affect your style if you have one at this point. So as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just loosely blocking in the lights that are on his face. I know that we've included brush. your mixer palette is included in light, but Nate is wondering, do you always use that the same mixer palette for your portrait? I, I do. I do. And I never go, you know, if you hold in your option key on Mac, I think that's all on a PC, you get your eyedropper. You know, some artists will go over here and they'll grab a cover, color off the face. And that's fine. Um, but it's not my interpretation of the, of the uh, 
of the subject, so I don't do that. I like muted colors, so obviously my, my palette here is very muted, uh, very soft colors, and I'll just try and work with that. Sometimes I'll even go in and just start a painting. with those three colors, or maybe a blue and a red and a black, and mix my own. But usually for my work, this is the palette I've built up over many, many paintings, and that's what I use. That's my starting point. I know that we were discussing this before the webinar started, but um, there's a question wondering how long it typically takes you to do an illustration from sketch to final. Okay, this is Psy right here, which I finished about a week and a half ago, and that took me eight hours. Um, the average is anywhere between seven hours and 15 hours, depending on the subject. I did a painting of Jay Billis for ESPN two weeks ago. They uh, called me Friday night needed sketches by Monday morning, so I did a bunch of sketches over the weekend. They approved the sketch Monday night late, and I said, when do you need it? And they said, oh, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So I got up Tuesday morning and worked all day and uh, got that one squeezed in in about nine hours. What is your background, Greg, as far as um, training and art-based training, I guess? Or did you learn on your own? School, I had some high school classes. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to uh, I started college with a medical illustration career in mind and went for one semester and dropped out. So everything I have at this point is self-taught. What was it about medical illustration that didn't appeal to you? I'm just kidding. It's not that it didn't appeal to me. I was young and dumb, and I would rather party instead uh -huh. of uh, focusing on my studies. And uh, when I left that, when I left college, I worked as a uh, photo restoration artist with watercolor and airbrushes. And that was the days before Photoshop. So, uh, you know, they would bring us prints, and I would have to either use watercolors or airbrushes to retouch the prints, which would then be reshot and uh, reprinted for the customer, or do graphite with negatives, and we would use magnifying glasses to retouch the negatives with graphite. So at this point, you know, I'm blocking. I'm not really looking real closely at this sketch or this reference of Psy. I'm just uh, throwing in some lights and darks where I think they need to be and then double checking with the photo. Sandra is wondering if it's possible to see the ESPN sketch. Do you have that up on your website? I do. It's uh, in the gallery. Um, so if you go to my site and click on gallery, it should be the second one in from the left. Okay, great. I'll send out your website information to everyone again so that they have it. It was kind of cool because Jay, uh, Jay reached out to me on Twitter the Saturday after I finished that painting. And, Said he really liked it. He's losing his hair a little bit, so he uh, he said I went a little light on his hair, and that Bob Ross would have thrown a happy cloud on his forehead. And little did I know that he was actually on the air as he was uh, sending me these messages. So that was kind of neat. I'm gonna zoom out a little. I usually don't go 
that far end on our blocking. Thomas is wondering if you ever use extremely saturated colors in your paintings. I would imagine it depends on the subject. It depends on the subject, but I'm going to say really no. It's just not it's just not the style I like. I don't really care for really saturated paintings. Um, I've just got something for muted colors. Do you keep the sketch that we see here? Is that always a part of your final painting? It is not. I will keep it above my painted layer for a while. That's what it looks like without the sketch. When I'm ready to uh, to really dedicate myself to it, I'll duplicate my sketch, turn the duplicated layer off, and then I'll drop see that went to the wrong spot. I'll drop the sketch right on top of the painting. Do you tend to use a lot I'll of layers? It there. No. No, and I know I know some of the guys, um, you know, Mike Thompson, Greg Banning, uh, those guys will use uh, many layers. I know Mike does. Um, and, and I just, I, I, I haven't been able to bring myself to do that for some reason. If I have something that I really want to try out and I know that it, it's probably not going to work with the painting, then yes, I'll pop open a new layer, but I try and stick to traditional methods as much as I can and only use one layer. But do whatever feels right for you. If you want to if you want to use 15 layers, go for it. And I will say I have this, I'm saving this as a Photoshop file. Um, why? I'm not really sure. Usually I'll work in a RIF, which is the native painter format. That's a much smaller file than a Photoshop file. It takes up much less disk space. Do you have any shortcuts in particular that you tend to use often? Yes. Uh, the option key for the eyedropper. The space bar for your pan. Um, B is your brush. N. Does N not uh, rotate canvas in uh, light, Tanya? That's a good question. And right now, it's escaping me. I'm not sure if it's N. Let me go and check. On that. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know in a second. I don't really rotate my canvas very often, but when I do, the N key rotates my canvas for me. Thomas is saying N is the eraser. Let me go, I'll go and check what the E is rotate. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, control minus zooms Thanks, out. Tom. Control plus zooms you in. Those are, those are mainly the, the shortcuts I'll typically use. Thomas is wondering, when you're all done with this, do you typically save as a PSD or a RIF? Um, I will typically save it as a, uh, a RIF all the way through. If I need to take it into Photoshop, which I, I really don't have to very often, um, then I'll save it as a Photoshop file. For some reason my paint's not going down. Whoever said that N was erase and light was correct. <laughs> I had it stuck on the eraser. 
I, I tell you, I tell you why lately I have been saving some things in Photoshop. Um, I don't know if anybody knows the trick, and I think my last light webinar I, I brought this up. If uh, a lot of artists, especially old school artists, would hold up a drawing to a mirror to be able to see where their mistakes were. I don't know if anybody does that currently. Uh, I use my iPhone. I'll either take a screenshot, email it to myself, or just take a picture of the screen with my phone. Or lately I've been using Dropbox. Um, and Dropbox will open up small Photoshop files. When it starts to get really big, it won't open it. So if I save it as a PSD, then uh, I can usually pop it open on my iPhone. And I'll reference my mixer palette for a while, and then as I start to get more colors in here, I'll just start to use my eyedropper tool. And again, that's the option key. Do you consider Painter Lite to be easier to use than Painter 12? For a beginner, I would say yeah. You know, if you're just coming into to Painter, I would say it's a good stepping stone because you're not going to try and force yourself to use tools that you might not normally use. Where light will allow you to just dig into your brush and start painting. Did, did I really answer that question? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that the tools that are provided in light, they are the same as what you have in Painter. Exactly. So you the just don't have all the options that you're going to want to spend your day playing with. Exactly. So we try to provide a nice sampling of tools to get someone started, get their feet wet, mm -hmm. and then you can move up from there to pro. That was really what we were trying to accomplish. Right. Well, luckily, since I've already painted this guy, I know some of the topography of his face and where he's got some interesting features. Um, and notice I'm throwing in some really funky colors here that you wouldn't think would work well in a portrait, but it really does. If I go in here and zoom in on size I, you're going to see some really strange colors. Purples, violets, but in the whole It worked. So, you know, I tell people, don't try and get hung up with trying to match every color that's in a person's face. Um, just have some fun with it. If you're in the right family, you'll, uh, you'll do okay. I noticed a particular question. Um, in our registration where someone was asking about painting on photos, do you ever do anything like that or do you, you tend to use more photo reference? I use photo reference and I'll paint directly on a blank canvas. I, I really have never tried painting on a photo. And that's where you really get into the cloner tools, right? Right. In most cases, our, our photographers, photo artists, will use the cloning features, mm -hmm. which is not something that is included in Light. So if someone is looking for that functionality, that's something that we have in Painter 12. 
Greg Banning has a question for you. Greg's here. <laughs> Hi, Greg. Here, another painter master. Um, he's wondering if you have any particular favorite brush to finish off your painting with. Greg Banning's custom brushes dot com. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, you know, Greg, I'll typically go through the entire painting with the same brush. Um, I might use two, maybe three brushes in in light. Uh, I'm using my favorite, which is the captured bristle in pro. I have a couple of favorites that Don Siegmuller gave me, um, but other than that, even in pro, I use the captured bristle brush a lot. And thanks for coming, Greg. I think every artist finds those favorite you know, one to three brushes that they rely on for a lot of their work. Yeah, I agree. All right, right now I'm going to commit myself to this and drop this right on the canvas. Now anything I do, I have my sketch layer turned off. I can turn it back on to see if I've gone astray with the likeness, but at this point I'm uh, I'm married to this, so anything I do is going to start covering up the sketch. And my brushes are still a little too small, so I'm going back up to a fat one. I know uh, somebody asked uh, in in the sign up about blending, and. Uh, in the videos I just released last week, I, I don't want to make this sound like I'm selling something, so I'm not going to say go buy them, but um, I will go in and I'll use sometimes um, let's see if I can find it. I'll either use the blur uh, We don't have the just add water and light, do we? No. No. The grainy water might grainy water and grainy places. blender, that's similar. Um, I'll use those to blend in an earlier stage before I start detailing. I don't like to leave my paintings with a blender. If you notice this has a lot of brush strokes in it, which I think gives skin tones a realistic look because your skin's not exactly smooth. Um, and then when I'm ready to start blending in the detailing stage, I use my eyedropper. Let me go back to my capture bristle. I will set my opacity down to about 15%. Zoom in here so everybody can see. And I will just start grabbing edge tones. And with that low opacity, and sampling colors in the region, I can get a nice blend. But it doesn't look airbrushed. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, we did have another question come in that's just related to the difference between Painter Light and Painter 12. And I, I can help answer this one while you're painting, if you like. Um, okay, go ahead. But the real difference is Painter Light includes, there's 96 brushes to get you started, where Painter 12 has over 800 brushes and the ability to customize brushes. So you can make 800 more. Greg has mentioned that he uses brushes from Don Siegmiller. You can exchange brushes with other artists, and you can also import and save workspaces. So the big difference is the customization capabilities that you have in Painter Pro, where Painter Lite is more what you see is what you get. There, right. There's not a lot of customization capabilities in here. 
And you can you can add to that if you like, Greg, if I missed any big points. Yeah, and did you mention the layers? I didn't. Uh, the, the, one of the, uh, the features that's missing in Lite as opposed to Pro is blending options for layers, uh, which is multiply and overlay, etc. And also the ability to pick up an underlying color from another layer. But you know you can still get the job done without that. We're not expecting you to finish the entire painting here today, and I just noticed that we're already over our um, our thirty minute painting mark. So I would like to encourage any of you that are here with us, if you have additional questions, please log them in the question panel so that we can get those answered for you. Thomas is um, asking, some of the brushes in light to do pick up underlying color, don't they? And that is true. You will have brushes that will blend and mix with other colors. It's just the capability of picking, if you're on a layer and you wanted to pick up some color that was on the canvas, we don't have that capability. So going through the layers. Right. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's not a huge deal. You can, you can make do without that. Do you ever use any of the effects or the question actually is, do you use the effects tool? Do I use the effect tool? I do not. I do not. Um, I have on occasion used adjust colors. Uh, I did a painting, a, a private commission for a gentleman about a month ago who wanted, uh, wow, that was neat. Uh, he wanted a completely desaturated picture, of basically a black and white portrait done. And I painted it in color instead of painting in black and white and used the saturation to give him different variations of the painting. Other than that, I do not. No, I like to try and create my own effects. How long did it take you to master painter? Does anybody really master it? <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much you can do in Painter. I don't think that you could master it if you wanted to. Um, in order for me to get comfortable enough to, uh, to use it in a production environment, it didn't take long at all because I forced myself to use only a limited set of tools to get jobs done. And then in my spare time, I would add in extra tools and play around with it. But, you know, if you think of it in terms of painting, if you're creating a painting, if you were to do it traditionally, you would have your brush and your paint. That's it. You wouldn't have any other, any other tools to distract you. Start with that, and, uh, and you'll do fine with it. The great thing about it is that you will never get bored because you could continue to experiment with all the different tools and explore in your free time, like you said, and end up finding additional tools that you work into your daily workflow. Right. Any other questions? 
Did we miss anything that was on the list, Tanya? No, I, I went back and I took a look at the spreadsheet and I think you addressed the questions that we also received in social media. So I think we're good. Everyone's just observing your painting process here. Yeah, the blocking um, phase, I'm not getting too technical with it. But, uh, it really looks like a loose sketch at this point, but that's what we want. Yogita, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name correct, so I apologize if not, but she's wondering if you can tell us how you sketch. I know you mentioned at the beginning that you had used Sketchbook. You incorporate different tools. Mm -hmm. uh, what in particular is she wanting to know about how I sketch? I'm waiting for her to enter in here. So is there any particular aspect of sketching that you're wondering about that we can help you with? So I'm thinking maybe it's just in general. So you opted to do your sketch outside of Painter. Is there any particular scenario where you start a sketch in Painter or a reason why you may choose to sketch traditionally versus digitally? Um, I think it's a medical condition, <laughs> mainly a mental medical condition. Uh, I really can't answer that. I mean, sometimes I just have this itch to go back to the two traditional methods, and I'll pick up a sketchbook and do it there. Um, if I'm tight with a client on schedule, it goes straight to computer. That way I can get my ideas down and email them over and not have to worry about scanning or shooting and cleaning up and sending it over. Um, if I have plenty of time, I'll go back to old school methods and sketch in the sketchbook. Find a quiet room and just sit and work. Uh, as far as um, sketching and, and painter, I would recommend everybody play with their real brushes. The real, the real pencils are fantastic. And she did come back and say, how do you sketch facial features? So it's more related to um, portraits. Um, OK, that's, that's a tough one to answer. How do I sketch facial features? Um, let me see if I can, let's just put this away and turn my sketch on. And I'll zoom in here and show you. This sketch here was done in about, I'm going to say 20 minutes, and you can see how very loose and scribbly it is. Basically what I try and do is get down anything that has to do with the character of the person. Uh, he's got some funky wrinkles in his nose. He's got some nice character marks in his forehead. Uh, and I really focus on the eyes, nose, and mouth because that's where the likeness is. Beyond that, you can see his beard really doesn't resemble this. It's just a bunch of squiggles. A note to myself that he's got some sort of weird swirl in his beard. Um, maybe some references to folds, like the folds in his cap, but I don't get too crazy with, okay, this sketch has to be a perfect match to uh, to sigh. It doesn't have to be a detailed drawing. Just enough to give me something to reference as I'm painting. Does that answer the question? I'm waiting to see if she enters anything in here. Yes, that answered it. Thank you. Yeah, and let me just show you uh, the pencils in here. We've got a real 2B and a real 6B and a mechanical. And these are fantastic. You know, you're, you have paper textures in Painter. I usually set mine to a French watercolor. Gives it a little bit of grain, but not too much. And uh, if I had tilt 
on this pen, on this tablet, you can really see how it would react to some of these pencils, but they're fantastic. Go back to the 2B. You can really get in here and get some some nice hatching. Grab some of these colors out of his hat. It really does look like traditional pencil. You can see why you thought this was scanned from a... Do you now do all yeah. of your painting digitally, or do you still do a little traditional? I still do a little traditional. Um, if a client asks me for traditional, I'll give it to them. Uh, I met with a guy yesterday who I'll be doing uh, a portrait painting of his daughter, a private commission, and I gave him the option. I said, do you want this in oil? Do you want it in watercolor? Do you want it in digital? And to my surprise, he asked for digital. So I'll be doing that one in digital. I was kind of looking forward to picking up some uh, some oils and doing it traditionally. That's your pencils. Good stuff. Well, great stuff, Greg. I think you've gone beyond the call of duty in this webinar. <laughs> um, so I think we're going to close things off here. Um, there's a couple more questions coming in really quick here. What do you charge um, for a digital portrait? And That really depends on the subject matter. Um, I, I can say it's not cheap. Um, but it really depends. You know, I always ask the client, is it just one subject? Are we doing a background? Or is it something abstract for the background or just a flat color? Uh, that all weighs into the price of it. Do you ever end up printing your digital painting on a canvas and then adding some traditional media over the top? I do not, but I would like to try that. I know Heather Michelle does that, and she's got me a little intrigued. Yeah, I've seen, uh, she's been focusing on that a lot lately. I know Jeremy Sutton does a little of that also. Yeah, I, I myself have never tried that. I have a printer here in the studio that I print, uh, got clay prints with, up to, I think it's 13 by 19. But I do that on a stock paper that's similar to watercolor paper. And so I've never tried it yet. I don't know how it would work with watercolor paper. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I don't think I've seen anyone do that. And then Adonis asked, why sketch when you have the sketch feature or the filter? Just because I'm old school. Well, I think that nothing compares. A, a filter is not going to look anywhere near what your traditional sketch is going to look like. Because just as you mentioned, you know, you're adding elements into his beard that weren't actually in that photo. So. Right. Yeah, and, you know, the sketching to me is a way to learn the subject. You're learning features of the face or features of of the object, if you're painting a motorcycle, you're learning the topography of the motorcycle, you know, what parts go where. You're really teaching your mind what your subject is and how it how it is built. Um, and because I'm painting from scratch, from a blank canvas, I need to know that information, so that's why I would sketch it instead of using a filter. All right, we're getting a lot of thank yous. So at this time, um, we're going to go ahead and close down the webinar. But I want to remind you that Greg is creating those tutorials for painters. So you can go to gregnewman.org. You can check those out. I'll also edit this webinar, and I'll post it up to our YouTube channel so that you can watch it again and forward it to your 
fellow artist friends, and we hope to see you on future webinars. We have one coming up, I believe it's uh, next week or the week after with Painter Master Greg Banning. So we hope to see you there. Greg, is there anything else that you'd like to, um, outside of your website, where you'd like people to visit you online? No, I'm on Twitter. It's uh, Greg Newman on Twitter. And, uh, boy, I really don't even know what my Facebook page is. <laughs> All my social links are on my website in the top right. Uh, and if you have any questions, you know, you can email me at greg at gregnewman.org, and I'll be happy to answer questions or use the contact form on my site. And uh, the videos that Tanya was talking about is actually the entire painting process of Psy here that you see from Duck Dynasty. Uh, there's actually two, one that does the blocking and detailing and one that goes over hair. Um, other than that, no. Thank everybody for attending.